the switch from school children to the opening chords of Tosca is to bring on the most celebrated scarpia of our day, Tito Gobbi, the great Italian baritone. My first question, Mr. Gobbi, is how do you set about creating a role? You know, creating a role is quite a long and difficult job, but uh, normally I start f not from the music. I start from uh, reading and studying. Everything was written and said about the personage I'm going to perform. When I approach Falsa for the first time, I start studying Shakespeare in Italian translation and everything was written in Italian. And then I went to the original taste of Shakespeare and it was very hard. And I have a wonderful dictionary who helped me a lot. And then I start reading what everything was written by critics about the first performance of Falstaff, then costume makeup. When I knew my personage, I decided that I was ready to go to the music, to the score. And that's the way I do, always. How many years have you been playing Scarpia? About 20, 22, 23 years. And I imagine your performance has, has grown a lot, hasn't it? Oh, it's grown a lot, I think, but it's also changed because I like to change every night something. Can you remember your, your first Scarpia? I mean, oh, how, yes. how, is it, how has it differed? Oh, a lot from the first one, a lot. Also because I have 20 years more. The first time I performed Tosca was in a town out of Rome because the, my friends, my people, uh, the director of the opera house in Rome says at that time that I was too young uh, to uh, approach such an important role uh, as a Scarpia, too heavy, too... You need a dark voice, you don't have, you are too young, and so on and so on. Baritone doesn't live till he's 40, does he? <laughs> they say. <laughs> and so, uh, I decided to sing this role because I, I was very much fascinated by Scarpia. And uh, so I sang it in a town, Rieti, out of Rome. And then, when they realized that I already performed this opera, they offered me to sing it at the opera house in Rome with Beniamino Gigli and Maria Caniglia. It was a marvelous evening. It was an enormous success. My friends, my colleagues, Beniamino and Maria, came to me and said, wonderful. And it was so unexpected. The people, the director of the Opera House came to me, made a lot of compliments, and bravo, 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 we will have more and more, and so on. So I was happy and very proud, and I thought I was just walking in the sky when I left the stage. And there I met a friend of mine, Gino, he is not a man of theater, he's just a man who likes opera. And I say, hello, Gino, how are you? How was the performance? Oh, I say, well, 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 very good, very good. And so I say, Gino, when you say, well, 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 very good, that means that something was wrong. Oh, no, 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 tell me what was wrong. No, I will not spoil your evening tonight. So I push him in a corner and I say, Gino, you tell me now what was wrong in my performance. Otherwise, I would not be any more your friend. And Gino say, all right, if you want. What is the age of Scarpia? What do you think? I think Scarpia is 42, 45, 43. All right. How old are you? Oh, I'm a little over 20. All right. Then you walk on stage like a man of 20. And he was right. And I went home and I asked my father to walk. And my father laughed and said, what do you want for me to walk up and down? So I, I obliged my father to walk up and down stairs and down stairs and so uh, uh, in the garden. I, I was following him and tried to make an imitation of his way to, to walk. And then I, I was collecting a newspaper, and I saw how he was collecting a newspaper from the floor, and so. And the second performance was good. And I must thank Gino for all my life, because at that moment when I was thinking to have reached a very high success, just Gino, Mr. Norbody, pushed me down and made me face the truth. 
and from the great help he gave me, I was able to learn how to walk on stage, and but mostly to control myself in all my gestures on stage when I perform. Do you find that you, you look at other colleagues' performances a lot? Have you learned from other singers? Never. Never, because I don't like to go to the opera house, and that's why I have been sitting in the audience only 14 times in all my life, and never for a full opera. Please don't think I am superb or, or, or I'm stupid or, or I'm blind and I will not see you. Or, but I am only afraid that if I see other singers perform, I will be influenced by them and I will not be able to think in my way, to perform in my way. What do you think about the status of the singer today? I mean, in the 19th century, mm. the singers were all important and you probably find the conductor's name not even mentioned, or the producer's. Yes. But nowadays you find the conductor's name very large, and the producer's name very large, and the singer's not very quite so large. And the composer, sometimes nothing at all. <laughs> because first of all you must put the name of Verdi, or, or the composer anyway, because he is the genius who really, from nothing, build up a performance as show uh, an opera. Artists, we are all artists, on stage, on the pit, the conductor, and also the producer. But from the good collaboration between us can born a good performance. That's why I don't agree when I see the conductor's name bigger than mine. And I don't agree, and I never ask to put my name bigger than the others. What for? Why? Why? We are only artists who try to make in the best way a good performance with the work of a genius, of a composer. But when you've worked out so fully what you want to do on the stage as a Rigoletto or Falstaff, mm. don't you find it rather terrible that if you suddenly have a producer who's come in perhaps from films, from the stage, mm. not with a real musical knowledge, suddenly mm. trying to tell you Oh, oh, yes, productive. the producer will try to tell me. Sometimes they don't tell me anything, and that's worse, because they, they, they think I am a big ham and uh, it's not a question to lose <laughs> breath to talk with me. But uh, sometimes also I approach them and I say, why not we try to think, what is your opinion, my opinion is that, and if it is a good producer, it, will, it must be also very clever, and he will understand. And then we have a collaboration. But sometimes it's difficult also to have a complete collaboration between orchestra, uh, director, and uh, producer, and singers. Because every one of us have a, a great personality, or believe to have. And a lot of us believe to be more important than what really we are. The conductor can always win on the night, can't he? Oh, yes, conductor can build up a performance, can destroy it. But that is uh, up to everybody, because I can destroy the performance very easily, too. But uh, we are not there to, to make fun, we are there to work seriously. Do you go in for sport a lot? Oh, I have done a lot. Not anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> I stopped my sport years ago. What did you like best? Oh, I was, uh, when I was student, I was Italy's champion in skiing. And, uh, and most musicians seem to like driving cars. Do you drive a car? Yes, I drive a car. Now I drive, I'm a very careful driver but I was used to drive like a mad. <laughs> I was driving very fast. You mean like most Oh, the police in England know me very well. <laughs> they stopped me a lot. <laughs> but very kind, all the time, wonderful. Do you like making records? Yes, yes. I, I mean, do you think that, that any of your records really give a, a, a really satisfactory no, idea of what you do? not one. I can't be very happy about my records. I hope in the future, I will do more record and better, better quality. Isn't the one you could point to and say, well, now that's not a bad idea of how I sing Oh, the Tosca is very good. The Tosca I have done, complete opera with Carlos Di Stefano, conducted by the Sabbath in La Scala. I think it's one of the best I have done.
And that is the end of this edition of Talking About Music, in which you heard Tito Gobby and also paid a visit with Peter Colborn to the music department of a London school. This is John Amis saying goodbye from London.